Hello everyone, my name is Adu and this is Ready Go Expat. A few weeks ago, I saw on LinkedIn this quote that said, the new American dream is earning a US salary while living in Latin America. Not only is there a high number of digital nomads uh, traveling again after the pandemic, but this has also helped companies speed up the process of offering remote jobs for people which, who can be based anywhere in the world. And if you work for a company in North America, living in Latin America is a great option because you're basically in, kind of in the same time zone. So after doing some research online, I'm going to tell you my top 10 picks uh, in South America for remote workers and digital nomads all over the world. Ready? Go! Number 10 on the list is the capital of Chile, Santiago. Santiago is known for being safe for digital nomads and travelers. It's actually considered one of the safest countries in South America. However, of course, when traveling to any big city, you gotta be careful, especially when using public transportation. The cost of living for a digital nomad in Santiago is around $1,600 a month. A one-bedroom studio rent in the city center is about $450, and you should expect to pay $130 with utilities per month. Santiago is a relatively safe city, and you can travel to most places on foot, or you can use the metro there, which costs around $1 per single ticket. However, some nomads in Santiago said that the city is a bit more expensive than other major South American cities, and that living there can be a bit boring because of their nightlife and options of activities to do. From Chile, we go to Argentina. Córdoba is number nine on our list. Córdoba is the second largest city in Argentina, and it's located in the country's center. Córdoba is known for its beautiful architecture, vibrant nightlife, and delicious food. The city is home to many universities, so you'll find a young and lively atmosphere. There are also plenty of places to work, including co-working spaces, cafes, and even a few libraries. For a one-bedroom studio in the city center, be ready to pay around $250, and your cost per month is going to be around $850 US dollars per month. Some of the pros include that it's pretty safe, affordable to live in, and not very crowded. On the downside, some nomads have complained about the internet speed in Córdoba and also the lack of activities to do in your free time. Bolivia is an underdog when it comes to countries to live in South America. It's not as popular as, say, Argentina or Colombia. But number eight on our list is Sucre in Bolivia. Sucre is arguably the prettiest city in Bolivia. It's the country's constitutional capital, La Paz is the seat of the government, and has some of Bolivia's best preserved colonial architecture. Apart from that, there are many cozy bars and restaurants in the center. A one-bedroom apartment in the city center costs around $400, and you can expect to pay about $25 with utilities. So it's very affordable compared to other big South American cities. Overall, Sucre is the most pleasant and relaxing city to base yourself in as a remote worker in Bolivia. Due to its small size, however, it may become a bit boring over time. The capital of Ecuador, Quito, is a narrow and long-shaped city with colorful houses, colonial buildings, parks and squares in the old town, and skyscrapers in the new city. A one-bedroom apartment in the city center is around $450 US dollars, and utilities can add up to $50 per month, so it's an affordable city overall. However, some nomads living in Quito have mentioned that it's not that safe compared to other cities and that even though there are many cafes and co-working spaces to work from, it could be a bit dangerous to walk around with your laptop in your bag. Rio de Janeiro is one of the most charming cities on the planet and it's Brazil's top tourist destination. But aside from that, it has also attracted many remote workers due to its natural beauty, attractions and nightlife. Rio is a culture and industrial powerhouse home to over 12 million people in its metropolitan area, but also an accumulation of extreme contracts. You'll find incredible wealth as well as staggering poverty here. As a digital nomad, you can expect to pay around $1,500 a month in Rio, and that includes rent, food, utilities, and stuff. Um, and you, can, you should also expect to pay about $500 for a one-bedroom apartment and $100 for utilities. Obviously, if you're planning to go to Rio between December and February, expect to pay double or three times that. This is because not only it's summer in Brazil, but the city gets packed with tourists from all over the world who visit Rio for its carnival party, which usually happens in February. However, one of the most common complaints shared by foreigners is that living in Rio is not that safe. They say that it's not a city where you can walk at night and that even the day you should really be careful in the area where you're walking. Number five on our list is the capital of Colombia, Bogota. 
I moved to Colombia from Brazil a year ago and I've been living here since then. What I love about Bogota is that you'll never run out of new experiences. There are many things we can do in the city, the nightlife is fantastic and it's the biggest hub in Colombia to visit other parts of the country flying from El Dorado Airport. A one-bedroom apartment costs around $350, but if you're expecting to look for it on Airbnb, well, expect to pay a bit more than that. And for utilities, you could just pay a little less than $100 a month. One of the things that surprised me about Bogota is its size. It's a huge city. However, traffic is a big problem. For that reason, I highly recommend using the Transmilenio, which is a bus rapid transit system covering most of the city. Unlike Medellin, Bogota still doesn't have a metro system. Cuenca is a genuinely small, beautiful city in the center of Ecuador and it has been attracting a lot of foreigners and Ecuadorians at the same time. It is an excellent option for those who want a nearly perfect climate and a more relaxed atmosphere than you might find in Quito. Cuenca has a smaller digital nomad community than Quito, but it is growing. There are a lot of expats and retirees living in Cuenca, attracted to the city's perfect climate and lower living costs relative to the United States and Europe. Rent for a one-bedroom studio in Cuenca is around $450 and expect to pay around $35 for utilities every month. However, one of the downsides of living in Cuenca is the high number of foreigners living there, especially retirees. Well, this could be an advantage, but it's also a disadvantage because of the high price of things in general, especially housing when compared to cities like Quito, for example. And now we come to the top three on this list, but before I go to the third place, please remember to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Number three in our list is Lima in Peru. It is one of the largest cities in South America with an incredible history behind it. The city has architecture like no other. Some churches are of Baroque, Renaissance or Neoclassical style and several were built between 1535 and 1700. Due to security concerns, most expats end up choosing safest neighborhoods in Lima and one of them is Miraflores. It is strategically located near the sea and it has attracted a lot of foreigners who live in Lima. A one-bedroom studio in Lima can cost around $500-$550 per month and utilities can add up to $75. And of course, we're talking about Peru, so I need to mention Peruvian cuisine. Peru is home to dishes and flavors you won't find anywhere else. While this is hardly a secret, since there are more Peruvian restaurants outside Peru than ever before, it's one we might not give enough credit to. And number two on the list is Medellin in Colombia. Medellin is quickly becoming a digital nomad hotspot, similar to the likes of Chiang Mai and Bali. The weather is also pretty good. Medellin isn't known as the city of eternal spring for nothing. It's sunny almost every day, and other than two rainy seasons, it's a pretty perfect climate to live in. Community is also a big attraction for digital nomads. There's a vast, highly active expat community and the Paisa people are warm, welcoming and fun. I have been to Medellin twice and I have to agree with the weather. It's amazing, especially compared here to Bogota. Uh, but also, make sure you like reggaeton or at least you're open to listen to it because you're going to listen to reggaeton everywhere in the city. A one-bedroom apartment in Medellin costs around $400 and be ready to pay around $60 to $70 on utilities every month. However, this price can go up if you're looking for some specific neighborhoods like El Poblado. Medellin was awarded in 2013 with the title Innovative City of the Year by the Wall Street Journal. It has a lot of co-working spaces with free Wi-Fi in common areas and a wide range of cafes and restaurants, which allows you to work comfortably in a pleasant environment. And the number one city on our list is Buenos Aires in Argentina. Many digital nomads are drawn to Buenos Aires by its Latin flavor, uninhibited nightlife, low living costs, and immersive local culture. I visited Buenos Aires a total of five times and I never remember getting bored living there, so it's no surprise that it's number one on our list. A one bedroom apartment in the center costs around $320 and utilities are around $50. However, staying in neighborhoods like Palermo, Recoleta and Belgrano is highly recommended. The city center is great for spending the day as a tourist rather than for living. Moreover, Buenos Aires has a scattering of co-living spaces that are great for new arrivals. But longer term residents tend to look for rooms to rent. Unfortunately, there's a culture of overcharging, so it's a good idea to check Facebook groups of expats living in Buenos Aires. All in all, Buenos Aires is a great city for its culture, nightlife, low cost of living, expat lifestyle and cheap public transport. However, it is not so great for traffic noise, urban sprawl 
petty crime, crowds and currency fluctuations. And what do you think about this list? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching until the end and I'll see you next time.